Yeah, what can we do for you paying people? Yeah, like what do you want? Uh, what are the like you Patreon people? What do you want? Uh, and we have some ideas. Of for stuff twenty dollars, we do. we'll kiss for one minute. Brunch, hit it, boys. <laughs> I, uh, I've got one for you. Give it to me. So, yesterday, at my place of work, somebody said, Oh, I'm about to go into that break room. There's about a quarter of a donut with my name on it. And I said, Not so fast, chief. I just lopped off a fifth of that thing. And then, in a moment of silence, a bunch of us were like, so how much of the donut is remaining? Pete, how much of the donut was remaining? Uh, uh, so you took a fifth of a fourth? Yes. Uh, I, it really you know, forces fuck, you to man? exercise a muscle <laughs> you have not even thought about in forever. Uh, like one twentieth. That's my fucking... Let's do so. Do, do it. I don't show, your, show your work. God damn it. I don't have a pen. Uh... So I did some mental math, and I think... I'm very bad at math. I think my I reasoning was right, but I my math was wrong. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> don't you ever put me in this yeah, fucking position. Don't you position. ever make me do math again. Uh, so I passed 11th grade. Here's what I was thinking. Uh, how did I even get to it? it like, a couple other people got to it immediately, and I was like, I don't think so. And then I took, like, three hours, and I was like, yeah... I think that is it. God, I, uh, I, people are going to be so frustrated who are, actually have brains that listen to this podcast. So, n- no. <laughs> they're, well, they're, they're, the joke's on you because you're not funny. You're good at math. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, so the way I think of it is you've got to get them both uh, to be the same. What's the bottom number in a fraction? Uh, the denominator. Is that uh, it's a numerator and the yeah, denominator? Right, All right, right so you got to get the same denominator. So you got fourths and fifths. Both of those are uh, you, of they 20. both go into twenty. So, so I had the right idea, sort of. Right. So I took um, five twenty fifths away from twenty twenty fifths. Right. Yes. Uh, no. Right. Uh, Fuck. <laughs> so, fuck. Uh, wait, 20 25ths is... No, that's three quarters. Right. Oh. Shit. Oh, no, no. I took five 25ths away. Wait, fuck. One... I simply don't know if this can be done. Um. Oh, right, right. So, so that... you took a fifth away from a fourth... So there's one twentieth left, right? So the conclusion that people had was there is one fifth left, uh, right? There, there's twenty percent left, which is the same as one fifth, right? Wait, so if it took four. F- f- <laughs> so <laughs> are you are you turning out to be the one that is worth it, worse at math here? No, well, now I've, uh, even though I knew the problem going in, now I feel like I'm on the spot again. Um, so, four, five twentieths minus five four twentieths. Right. Now there's one twentieth, which is, what's that, five percent? That can't be. There's way more than that. Uh, I don't know. Text, somebody somebody, let us know. <laughs> uh, listen to brunch. Uh just to tweet at listen to brunch or something show show your, show your work yes. show your work i'm a big show your work guy in life not just in math i really did not expect this episode to get off on a math problem i actually think that i thought that would be a fun little thing and i bet that people enjoyed that i bet i bet people will people enjoy, want to kill themselves right, listening to it i bet people it, will but. enjoy telling us that we're wrong and uh here's how you do it and i'm sure that it was very very painful uh to but, listen to it's, but it's this math. Is real, this is the it's subjective. Experience. Did you see the tweet? It's this their week? opinion. If they, if <laughs> yes. whatever, like, tell us what you the, think it is. Right. The the good part about math is that there's no wrong answer. Yes. Uh, did you see the tweet this week that was like uh, the brunch experience, and it was like a it was a tagged tweet, and it was like 
listening to a podcast and hearing the host discuss uh, a trivia bit that you know and they can't figure out is the closest experience to feeling like they're feeling like you're a ghost. Good. And everybody was like, that is the full brunch experience. I like that because that's my favorite thing in the world. If I'm talking to, if somebody overhears me talking with somebody and they're like, oh, uh, couldn't help but. Uh, but here I'm like, well, you mean you so, you, so you were mean eavesdropping, inserting yourself into this conversation, right? You know what this has nothing to do with? You Fucking know. you, get out of here. <laughs> and that's uh, that's generally my every experience when I go out in public. Um, we did some movies this week. There's also some new music this week. Shouts out the story so far. Proper dose is finally out. This stinks because uh, we've been getting little teases here and there. For a while, well, I so got the full album. so not now that brag. it's out, so did I. Not to brag, yeah, fuck and off. <laughs> uh, now that it's uh, now that it's out, everyone. Similarly to when uh, the Houndmouth album came out, people were like, "Hey, what do you think of the new Houndmouth album?" I'm like, "I have no idea. I last listened to it like two months ago." <laughs> um, uh, I did the cool thing though, where uh, remember how we've discussed in the podcast before, where if something leaks, I won't listen to it because I respect the artist too much. Yeah. But appa- apparently, I'll still do that when the artist gives me the album. Oh, really? I just didn't listen to it. Uh, I didn't listen to the pre. I mean, I really appreciate getting the getting the advance, but I didn't listen to it. And now I'm starting to listen to it now that it's actually out. Nice. Well, the problem is it's now- sort of like you can't talk to anybody about it other than other right. than like you or yeah. the band. Yeah. So I like to discuss. Uh, I have a few like story so far fans that I discuss the music with. Yeah, yeah, nice. Um, yeah, the issue with it coming out now is uh, other albums have come out. Like Christine and the Queens has a new album out that I'm very excited about, and uh, Wolfpack came out with a couple new songs this week. I'm seeing them this weekend. Very excited for that, and. I'm like, oh fuck yeah! This is I I, I feel this responsibility to uh, re get into the new stories of our stuff, which if you haven't listened to it, is very very fantastic. Um, it's it's got uh, what's it called on it uh, the the uh, out of it, yeah. Which uh, we first heard uh, all of us uh, a while ago, but the album's very very good. There's some good. Uh, not necessarily acoustic, partially acoustic songs, and it's very good. I don't know any of the names. Haven't listened to it in forever, but it's a great album, and I hope you guys are all excited to listen to it. Um, we had the discussion this week. Uh, my friend made me a playlist, and I was listening to it, and there were so many good songs on it, and I was like Googling the artists as I was listening to it, and I was like, fuck, this feels like perfect stuff for the brunch playlist. And I miss the hell out of... Um, picking songs for a brunch playlist i don't miss doing a brunch playlist and i feel like we need to come to some sort of resolution there because people really like that playlist and i just simply can't be bothered with it so it's a real dilemma (laughs) and it's it's the laziest thing in the world because all we have to do for the brunch playlist is like add three songs a week as we're saying our songs we just both need to write down what the other person did because i have spotify you have apple music and we add the songs to both and it's simply too much trouble. Yes. It is so, it feels like so much work. And uh, it stinks because I love when I hear a song that gets me excited and I'm always excited to tell people about it. And uh, if there are some people out there who like that song and know the artist or similar artists, I feel like it's just like a fun little give and take. And it's and, very, very good. And I didn't realize that you could track like the number of people that subscribe to a playlist mm-hmm. on those platforms. And I was like, I don't even know if anybody listens to to our playlist when we did it anyway. Yeah. And you were like, uh, actually, there's like 400 subscribers. And I was like, what like the 700. fuck? 700. Really? Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. Jesus Christ. So because I, like, on Spotify, uh, you can follow people and right. people follow you sh- and you have followers you, and yeah. stuff. And uh, as is probably the least surprising thing in the world, I don't fucking say what my spotify name is or whatever right. so like some people have found me but i don't like do the social media part of spotify because i can just fucking tell you straight up i listened to abba today like, that's what <laughs> 700 times yeah like you don't need my fucking uh stats i got them if you want them you can just guess them but yeah like when i would tweet out the uh or when we would tweet out the link to the brunch playlist i think people would just click uh follow because you can follow a playlist okay and uh 
Yeah, there's well, Spotify is. See, I've, it, I've come to find Spotify is a lot better than Apple Music. I that's like what people more. say, but I've, I'm too used to Apple Music. I so. hated Spotify back in the day. It was so buggy, and there was always an issue. And sometimes there's still issues with it. But I find that uh, the my bigger issue with Apple Music is the whole you get in your car and it starts playing automatically. That doesn't and bother you wanna, me. Oh God! But it does. But for me, it, I mean, like at least in my car, it doesn't play the first song. Ah. It plays what I was last listening to, which is completely That's fine by me. Way better, yeah. Right. There is a uh, supposedly there's a song that you can get on Apple Music that's called like mm-hmm. fifty A's in a row. Yeah, and, and it's just like it's like a minute of just blank noise of sounds. Which uh, do you know the story of what Wolfpack did with that? No, they uh, released an album a few years ago called Sleepify, and it was an album to sleep to. And it was 10 tracks of absolute silence. And when you went to bed, you just put the album on and uh, on repeat. So it racked up streams. Oh, my and God. They, went, they would get paid. And they put on a uh, free, not a free concert, a free tour from all the money they wow, made off of it. Awesome. Before Spotify was like, wait, what the fuck are you guys doing? <laughs> like, they, they've been on, like, CNN and shit for this because it was just this. That's fucking genius. That's yeah, it wild. was. Brilliant, and it's it's kind of annoying that Spotify stepped in. You could obviously understand why they did, right. but that's just a hilarious move. The uh, the 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 band leader also uh, has a book on Amazon dot com called uh, "How I Made Two Hundred Ninety Thousand Dollars Selling One Book," <laughs> and the book is two hundred ninety thousand dollars. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, uh, crafty lads. That's that's awesome. Yeah, so the fact that we have a a playlist with like 700 subscribers makes me feel bad about the fact that we're just too lazy to even add to it. So I think we should go back to it. Yeah. I think we should we should make some effort to 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 cuz I mean, I enjoyed doing uh adding to the playlist. Yeah. But I I just like at some point it just kind of got like annoying and ob- like felt like an obligation. Yeah, and and it. it would always be after we recorded an episode. It, the smart thing would have been, as soon as we were done with the episode, be like, okay, in Songs, front of each yes. other, let's both add them. Because inevitably, one of us would be at work or doing something or like you'd be at the gym or whatever. And it's like a – it takes like three minutes to do. <laughs> yeah. But do you know, realistically, people, think of your lives. How many things do you do in the day that take like three minutes to do? And you're just like, eh, I'll do it later. Like none. <laughs> and if something takes three minutes, that's like the busiest part of my day. My day is – Made up of 6,000 one-minute tasks. <laughs> and the idea of doing something that's three minutes, God, couldn't be me. It's why typically I, I don't go to the gym. It's like, it's Not anymore, too long pal. of a thing. It's too long of a thing. Uh, yeah, so I mean, we should get back to that. Uh, one of the things that we were also trying to get back on is uh, the Patreon. Yes. We're, we're trying to get back to our Patreon game. We have a, a couple ideas. We said back in the day. Yeah, what can we do for you paying people? Yeah, like, what do you want? Uh, what are the, like, you Patreon people, what do you want? Uh, and we have some ideas. Of for stuff $20, that we do. we'll kiss for one minute. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's what it should be. The Patreon should just be like, uh, like, dare us to do shit. Like, each month we set, uh, if we get this much money, we'll do this. So let's do like a crossover between Patreon and Kickstarter where <laughs> it's like, Okay, if we reach this much, then uh, we'll do this, and if we reach this much, then we'll do that, and it'll be all these crazy things, as long as it takes, like, under 15 seconds. Yes. We should do, like, a 2019 calendar. What's that? Like, a, like a, we should make a calendar for 2019. Where we do like a photo shoot of us doing ridiculous things. That wouldn't be bad. Uh, Would you be able to pay for it? We've got some ideas for the Patreon. Uh, So if you have ideas of what you want, then let us know. Or maybe use them for your own podcast. (laughs) Right. Uh, And if you want to subscribe to the Patreon, we have some stuff coming. Uh, www.patreon.com slash listen to brunch. Yeah. Do you ever listen to Pompa Moose? No. Have I done this before? No. Uh, Patreon was started by a guy named Jack ah, Conti. that's right, yeah. Yeah. They got some heaters. If we add the playlist, 
I've probably put Pomple Moose on the, the playlist before. I have listened to him because I remember when I signed up for Patreon, they show you this video, yeah. and it's him, yeah. and he's doing some weird shit, and I was like, wow, this guy uh, who runs Patreon is a weird-ass dude, and yeah. you're like, well, guess what? And then you told me the band, and I went and looked him up on, on YouTube. Yeah, they're really cool. They're one of those uh, like uh, homemade recording slash we shoot all of the tracking of it and we edit it into this cool kind of music video thing. That was really hot in the streets for a while. They did it, then a guy named Ryan Lerman did it, and both of them are really, really cool. If a playlist existed, uh, I would add the song Maybe by the group. I don't know if they're necessarily a group. uh, Woman Believer, and it's this girl... Christine Huckle, who has sung on a bunch of stuff I've liked in the past, and I didn't really necessarily know what her deal is. She's got this very breathy, uh, cool kind of voice, and all of her, uh, her her vocal is always produced in a really, really cool way. And uh, she's got a song with this group or thing project that she does called Woman Believer called Maybe, and it is fucking dope. They've got a four-song EP. They came out months ago. But I'm way late to it, so check that out. I would also add some stuff from the new Christine and the Queens album, because Christine and the Queens fucking rules. I've only listened to two songs so far. I listened to two songs on the way here. They are both really cool. And Wolfpack has uh, some new songs. One of them is called Lost My Trouble Long Ago, and it's fucking awesome. It sounds like it could be a Cosby Show theme. Ooh. No, no, no problematic. <laughs> Uh, we should start saying no problematic like uh idiots used to say no homo no homo yeah i uh the this the we twitter account no, no problemo no no problemo <laughs> yeah. yeah that's not bad um uh the have we talked about the uh the barry mcconner yes. guy yeah. uh so he tweets like an asshole and he started a tweet the other day with nh and i was like what's nh and i was racking my brain and i was like Oh, fucking loser. <laughs> like, I know he's mocking people, but still. Oh, I forgot that people ever said that. I know. Uh, Dumbest thing very, in the world. Very pro- problemo. Um, well, it's I, the Michael Scott thing. It's offensive and just fucking lame. Right. So, double offensive. Um, I would add stuff from the new Pale Waves album. Uh, oh, yeah. I've gotten, I've gotten some people on Pale Waves over the nice. past like couple weeks. And I have to give a shout out to our guy, Ryan. Uh, no, it was Jeff. No, Pale Waves? Yeah. No, it was Ryan. At least it was for me. Who, Are you sure? Yeah. Jeff uh, Jeff was pumping them hard like a month ago to us. Really? Yeah. Or is it me in the group chat? Because I sent it like a month ago in the group chat, and I think Jeff responded saying, I'll check them out. Oh, no. I said, I'll check them out. I'm gonna, we're going to get to the bottom man. of this. Uh, yeah, because like a month ago... Uh, Ryan posted one on his story, on his Instagram story, and I looked it up, and I was like, shit, this band is fire. And yeah, he he, he gave me like the introduction to Pale Waves, so I gotta give it up to Ryan, at least from my perspective, because he's the one who introduced me to Pale Waves. Their new album just came out last week. I don't know why you're taking credit away from Jeff, man. Just let him have it. It wasn't Jeff, man. Uh, Jeff also wants to come back on the show, and we should have him on the show. Well, if he gives enough on Patreon, then uh, enough. maybe he'll get a crack at Did you at find that. it out? Did you look it up? Yeah, it was for sure Ryan. Yeah, yeah. so there you go. <laughs> uh, shout out to Ryan. Uh, the Lanny came out with some new music this week. Yes. And did you listen to it? No. Uh, I love the, the new single, Thick and Thin. Nice. Uh, I bet it's awesome. Lanny is like uh, St. Lucia for me, where every time I hear them, I'm like, yeah, this is dope. I would love this. And I'm always... Uh, it's like when, uh, it's it's like when uh, for those who have ever done the the dating thing, which neither of us have, but it's like when someone's uh, when you're like, oh, that person seems like a nice person, but uh, I'm Which, not I'm not really in the market right now, yeah. so uh, I'm not really going to give them that much thought. I whenever a song by Lanny or Saint Lucia comes out, I'm like, hmm, I'm pretty bogged down right now with some <laughs> other music. Uh, you seem great, but it it can't happen. Sorry. Or it's just like when you meet somebody and you're like, you're like, I like this person. Mm. We should hang out more. Just but like, oh it, yeah, like you sort of mean it, but you know, in the back of your mind, you're shout not out, gonna fucking shout out, out this him. dude Devin. I've uh, he's like friends with some of my friends, and every time we hang out, we're like, hey, you know who are friends? Us two. 
Yeah. We we don't need these other fuckers. Right. Like we should do this. We could have a blast on our own. We should and like we specifically. He's like, oh, so then should we get a beer at some point? I'm like exactly that's what we should do. And you, and you why don't and you we? Mean yeah, it earnestly. Like you mean it in the moment. You yeah. really want to, but you know it's not going to happen. Uh, a really funny thing happened this week on Instagram. Um, a former handlebar instructor who now teaches at Soul Cycle in Miami. Uh, posted. She oh, was so posting. She likes cocaine. Huh? She was post the cocaine. Oh, uh, she was posting a bunch Sonata. of stuff, and uh, she she made a little joke about like, uh, oh well, this is why I can't find any matches on online dating apps. And someone responded to her apparently and was like, uh, maybe your standards are too high. And she posted that, and she was like, rude. If anyone knows me, my standards are not too high. I'll date. Like anyone who I find interesting, and there have really been some people who you could never accuse me of my standards being too high. Like Barry, come on! <laughs> and then, like five minutes later, she was like, "A lot of people are responding to this, saying it was really rude of me to say that about Barry. Uh, I haven't seen Barry in years, but Barry was a really nice guy, and uh, he just wouldn't be what people would say is like a classically." hot person but he was fine and we had a great time he actually dumped me and then like there ended up being like 16 <laughs> more posts about barry and uh that like it was like she posted a thing of her like eating like dessert or something that's and like it's just that's, like that's like, like sad SNL about skin. barry yeah it was i i i uh i don't know what it's called when you respond to a thing we've discussed this it's technically not a dm not a slide it's, it's like a right. response yeah i was like Yo, this is you, like the you, best kind of humor because it was it seemed like and I'm sure she meant it as like a quick little side road in a bigger story and then nope that it because it <laughs> was it was going to be like a three piece story and this was say part 2 of the three piece story and that led to 60 more pieces just about this so whole thing. It's like exactly my so kind of humor. So it's like an episode of brunch. Yes. It's like we want to discuss something, we just start to discuss it, and then we get totally sidetracked on something else, yeah. and then the episode becomes about that. Yeah, so shout out to Natasha, because that shit was fucking hilarious. I, I, there were parts where I thought it was done, uh, because at one point he uh, he like requested to follow her or something, uh, and I was like, oh man, this was hilarious. And then there was like 10 more parts. Unbelievable. I think she actually posted, uh, she made it into a... Uh, like uh what's the thing on instagram now where you can make a separate story that's like on your profile oh yeah you, it's like a highlight yeah i think that she's got one now called barry and it's like 55 pieces really really funny one of those types of jokes that i'm like i really wish that i thought of that joke yes, because that's, I have that's a lot the type of, of shit i would do and that's yeah. that's the absolute worst what? feeling when you're like oh fuck i should have thought of that that's why i'm very glad that i'm not like uh, a musician musician because if i heard certain songs like i imagine the feeling the, of hearing a song fuck. that you think you should yeah. have written must be devastating i saw don henley uh like a year ago and one of the last songs he played was Everybody Wants to Rule the World by Tears for Fears. Mm -hmm. And he was like, hey, uh, I have no connection to this song, but I just, feel like I just I really feel it. like I like all these years later, I'm like just really upset that I didn't write it. And he played it and knocked it out of the park. And we were like, fuck, that would have made a really good Don Henley song. <laughs> uh, so this week, we actually, was it last week? No, it was this week, I think. Uh, we saw A Simple Favor. Yeah. I saw it last week. You saw it this week. Yeah. I think that's how that worked Pretty out. pissed, because I really wanted to be... I, 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 I thought that I was going to drive the Simple Favor wagon, and you got to it before I did, and now yeah. I feel like I'm just fucking piggybacking on your movie, so go ahead. No, no, no. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, also, I should mention at the, at, at the top here that we're heading into, like, prime... Oh, uh, yeah. Prime movie season. Not prime movie season, but... Uh, Things are heating up. Like you get to see good movies yes, soon. I'm also I'm like a little bit upset that we're gonna be in Austin uh, when like a, when some good ass movies come out. What movies come out then? Uh, it's like the 15th. When are, when are we in there? Like the mid. I don't know. Mid October. It's somewhere around. It's there. either early October or mid, mid October or late October. Yeah, one of the Octobers. Uh, but. That did, well, well, we can hit an Alamo draft house while we're down there. That would actually That's, be cool. I, see a movie I, together. I asked, I like said, should we do that? But I would feel guilty going to the movies uh, unless we did. What no, is Alamo draft house open? It's probably going to rain one okay. of the days. Uh, First Man opens 
uh, oh, around there. Oh, nice. Gosling? Um, yeah, and so, like, there are some good movies, and I think Halloween may be around there. Ooh, hmm. Bad Times at the El Royale. I am not excited for that serious? movie. Yeah, that movie. Looks I think awesome. that's. I think that movie's gonna suck. I just it have has, a, like a premonition. Of, it has sort of the uh, a little bit of the murder on the Orient Express. Exactly. Feel to it, exactly. Where it's like there are a lot of good people in this movie. Mm-hmm. It looks very interesting, mm-hmm. but mm, I don't know. So uh, we'll see. But they're they, lucky that Dakota Johnson and John Hamm are in it because those are two of the most beautiful people in the world. But I am excited that that there are movies to get excited about now. Like this we, this week, the week that we're recording this episode, absolute shit week for a movie release. I think the only movie that's coming out is uh, A House of the Clock. That yeah, falls. and I'm not interested in no, seeing thanks. that. Ja- I, I don't need the Jack Black doing kids. I movies. don't need back to back. Jack Black doing kids movies. Yeah, he's got Pass. he's got Goosebumps coming out like next week or the week after. Another one? Yeah, Goosebumps too. Ugh. Which I might see. Oh, it, yeah, yeah. But I'm only gonna see one of those. movies. Did you see the first Goosebumps no. one? Oh, huh. I heard yeah. it was okay. I it looked exactly like Jumanji. Yeah, that's true. And they um, just made another Jumanji. So uh, ridiculous. So a simple favor mm-hmm. with uh, Anna Kendrick and Blake Lively. Yes. And uh, Henry Goulding? Goulding? Who's that? The guy, the guy. from uh, from uh, Crazy, Crazy Rich, Rich Asians. Asians. Asians that, guy yeah. is, that guy's on the come up. Yeah. He was he was good in this, and he was really good in Crazy Rich Asians. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I really like this movie. So um, did I. I thought I it was... It a lot. I had I had one big issue with it. It won't be a surprising issue, but uh, I thought that Blake Lively was unbelievable... Which, like, I've seen J- Blake Lively, like, Blake Lively, she had a small role, but, like, she was really good in the town, so she's had some, like... Her accent was really bad in She's the had some good acting performances, and I think that people who come from, uh, like, television, there's always, like, a little skepticism of, like... Yeah, because she was on what, oh, Gossip Girl? I don't think anyone knows. <laughs> okay. uh, but... Yeah, like like she was in a like, stupid popcorn flick, uh, the Accepted, you know. Yeah. So like, uh, she, you're you're like you can't she's tell if not those like are a heralded actress, right? Like you can't tell if they're good act- actors or actresses. And she, yeah, she's fucking awesome because she, she. I thought that she was unbelievable in this. In this. Movie, yeah, and she looked great. Her fa- her like if I would put them up for uh like best costume design. My first note of the movie is. Fashion in all caps with a million exclamation points yeah. because all of it was great. Uh, Anna Kendrick's like style and fashion was awesome in it. Overall, the movie was like very twisty, which was cool. You didn't necessarily see each twist coming, which was exciting. My biggest issue was as the movie was going on, I was holding it in a higher in higher regard mm-hmm. of like, oh, this is legit. Oh, this is a good movie. This might be the best movie I've seen all year. Oh my god, this is what is this? Mamma Mia three I'm watching right now? <laughs> this is so good. And then fucking they have Anna Kendrick do a uh, white girl in the car rapping. Yeah, scene. that was uh that was a little much. And there, that's uh, that there, that was one of my, my notes. It's it sucks to say because everybody likes her more than I like her, but one of my notes is two hours of Anna Kendrick, a little much. I like her, and I didn't have, I didn't like feel like I was too overexposed by Anna Kendrick in this movie. But the the definite rapping in the car scene was a little much for me. Um, there were a few points in this movie that I felt like they they went a little overboard with I the was, silliness. I was liking her a lot because she was. Do, she was playing her typecast, typical Anna Kendrick role, but it just it worked in that movie. It was like instead of uh, like it let, was exactly let's make a movie around an awkward person, right? Ex- they didn't yeah. shoehorn Anna Kendrick in exactly. Like instead of let's uh, let's make a movie about this awkward person, which is what every Anna Kendrick role has ever been. It's been like let's have a mystery where the person who's trying to solve it is maybe a little awkward and that that added to kind of the the dark comedy elements so it it and worked it, and it also worked because blake lively here is like the coolest yeah. fucking like coldest yes yeah. coolest coldest uh hippest her fashion was fucking just unbelievable. a bad motherfucker cutting, cutting edge yeah uh just like this very very badass uh, person, and then you have on the opposite end, you have Anna Kendrick, who is really none of those things. Clueless, naive, uh, has secrets, mm-hmm. which uh, the secrets element of the movie was 
really cool. Like the whole thing. Like I, I think I only saw one trailer, and I intentionally did the they get did out a thing. Very bad job of promoting this movie. I think it's because they didn't want you to know or think anything, anything going in, and that's that's what I thought going. I knew I just knew that it was about someone who disappeared, and they kept saying things like "it's not what you think" and and shit like that. And I thought that it was like it was maybe going to be sort of a smaller project because of the fact that it didn't get promotion. But it's a Paul Feig Feig film. Like uh, that guy. Thomas Anderson. Yes, Paul Thomas. No, it, it was Paul Feig or Feig or whatever his name is. It like it had a dinky that, budget. Really? Yeah, it was but twenty million like a, dollars. He's like a big time uh, director, so uh, it wasn't like a small time thing. So uh, I, I liked it. I felt like it sort of suffered from a bit of an identity crisis at points in the movies. At points in the movie, um, like it was a thriller at points. It was a, definitely a comedy at points, um, and I just feel like the. the a lot of the movie was me trying to figure out what exactly this was. And I guess like, I don't have an overall problem with it because it was sort of like a dark comedy thriller sort of hybrid. Um, but I feel like at certain points they went the silly route that sort of cheapened. Uh, oh yeah, definitely. Uh, that, that was sort of cheapened like biggest the, issue with it. the suspense and the thriller ness of it. It's funny that you said uh, you couldn't necessarily tell what it was doing at points because one of my notes is uh, Gilligan esque montages. There were a lot of those. There were a lot of like, what's going on? Here? What? Where are you go? Oh, I'm starting to see what the. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, so I thought that those were uh, were cool. Uh, there's uh, one. There's like. At the climax, there is one point that, like, I was just I completely cringed at. at like the climax of the whole movie, um, and I oh, I don't was it the reveal it. of uh, of how the bad guys getting taken down? Y- yes, but also like the the twist that comes after that with a uh, with a motor vehicle. Oh yeah, I mean. I, I thought that that was I remember was like, my first Mean Girls. Exactly. That was like, ah, uh, that, 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 this movie didn't need that. It, uh, yeah, but I, I kind of, I, I know what you're saying. I did like the herky-jerkiness of it, though, because I really, like, the whole movie, generally, the viewer has no fucking idea what's going on. And right. all they want is any sort of resolution. Um, the, there was a character named Dennis Nylon. Needed way more of him. He, he was, was a very designer. he was a fashion designer who uh, was I don't know if this is a stereotype like if there are any fashion designers out there let me know did, did people just assume that you're really fucking rude rude and sassy fashion designers are always so portrayed as being so fucking rude he says something uh, like she's like hi I'm looking for my friend she's missing and he's like oh yeah. Well, you're wearing a vintage scarf with a gap tee. Get the fuck out of my face. <laughs> and I was like, ah, Anna, you opened yourself up for it. Right. And she's like, hey, I want to hang out with that guy more. You got, you got faced. Yes. Um, <laughs> another, uh, another very important note. Never take out a life insurance policy on someone because even if they die, you're not going to get the money because everyone assumes that you killed them. Right. Every, uh, what, what percentage in movies, if someone uh, dies... There's a there's an 100 percent chance that within one week someone had taken out a life insurance policy on that person. Right. Like I feel like if I took out a life insurance policy on somebody, the next week or two or month They'd would be, be the worst days of my life because right. I would be constantly worrying. Got to keep the this fact fucker alive. They would die, <laughs> yeah. and I would go to jail. Yeah, that stinks because it's like seemingly. I don't know what the financial movement is of taking out a life insurance on policy, but maybe it costs you a little money at the time you do it, and then someone dies, you don't get any of that money back. Terrible investment. Right. Definitely don't do it if you're in debt, because they will 100% point the finger at you. Oh, yeah. Oh, this person's in debt. They just took out this life insurance policy. Yeah. 100% them. I think that I'm going to, I think that I'm going to, like, attach myself to people who are in debt. So if anything ever goes wrong, uh, I can just blame it on them, and they'll be like, "Well, why would that person do it?" Oh, they're like, in debt. Well, they they were in debt. That it's is like, like the, that is like the, one of the most desperate 
things. If, like, if you're in somebody debt, somebody will do anything. You're a prime suspect debt. for yes. everything. Yes. Like if there's like a, uh, like a, a child has gone missing in this neighborhood, who's in debt? Let's see. Right. That house is in debt. That house is in debt. So it's one of these two houses. Yeah. Um, so be careful with your money or else you're going to jail. Uh, I was very upset and uh, surprised that Linda Cardellini was cast in a horrible role. And yeah, I was so very pissed. Bad. Very yeah. bad. And like they they teased her at the beginning of the movie. As, she was like, early on in the names. credits. Yeah. And but there's only a few people in it. It's, no, I know. But like once you tease tease that you got to deliver a linda cardellini experience yeah and this one did not deliver she was like she played like a a weird role as like this art this artsy uh sort of gothic person and yeah. it just was did not fit her mold at all yeah it was uh and like she didn't play it well either no. it was uh that's what i'm saying it didn't fit her her i feel like linda cardellini is sort of not the best actress where she has a limited range can't tell can't stop looking at her. I know. Um, she didn't appear to be worried at all in this uh, in this movie, which is a bad start for Linda Cardellini. Got to right. play a character where she looks worried. Yeah, like Anna Kendrick shows up and she's like, "Hey, I'm trying to figure out this mystery," and she should have been like, "Why? Yeah, wait, you are you missing? Are we in Did trouble? You're missing? Are we I just got a life insurance? Get out of here! Get out of here! You can't be here right now. Like that. That'd be good. Like a lot of like, you can't be here right, right. now. That that's what it should have been. Um, but the other people in it, it had an interesting uh, group cast. of uh, other parents because it's about parents at a school. That uh, Aparna is that her name? Yes, Aparna Nonchurla. Oh, is she? Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> so out on her. Yeah. No, like the I- uh, the dude from Girls. Yeah, I don't know that guy, but I think that he's funny. He's he's funny and he's very handsome, and I'm 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 always happy to see him. And then who is the other parent? There were three of them that are always up to something. I forget who the third person was. Maybe not as famous as Aparna or the dude from Girls. Yeah, Who's also in other sure. things. I just can't think of what that guy's in. So what's uh the the guy Nylon? Uh, yeah, that's Rupert Friend. What's he? Oh, from? really? Yeah, I've heard that name before. It's a it's a name that you don't forget. Yeah, what's what's he in? Oh, he was in The Boy in the Striped Pajamas, which was a fucked up movie. Uh, oh, he's the new hitman. Um, he was in The Death of Stalin. He played the son of Joseph Stalin. So I he's still, your son. Nice. Oh, my, my son. And uh, he was in Homeland. I still haven't seen The Death of Stalin. Everyone says that one's good, right? Uh, apparently. I don't know. Yeah. Homeland didn't do. I remember my first 24. <laughs> uh, didn't do that. But uh, He was in the 2005 film Pride and Prejudice as well. Mm, nice. Uh, also, shout out to the lady from Twenty Four was in it. Played the mother of Blake Lively. I don't, oh, I don't know. She was. She uh, I forget the name of the. Uh, she Martha was... Logan was her character. She played the first lady. First lady, okay. Yeah, and uh, she had some mental health issues, and her husband, the president, was psyched about that because she kept figuring out that he was murdering people, and he was like. Nope, that's your mental health issues. Very sad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what would you give uh, a simple favor if we're doing our stamp grades? Uh, I would stamp it a really good. Okay, I would give it good. Mm. I don't think I don't think I would put it up there with like an absolute favorite of the year so far. Mm-hmm. But it is uh, it is a movie definitely worth checking out, um, and. Uh, it's one of the better ones of the summer. Yeah, I would go to see it again and uh, just take a break when the rap scene is coming up yeah. because we did figure out how to use Run P, so yes. maybe that's uh, maybe that's in there. Yeah, for the the AMC A listers, for those of you uh, living that flossy flossy, here's a pro tip: what you do is you pull up the movie and it will have some info about the movie. Then just swipe right. What, what is it? What's this motion? Is this swiping right or left? That's swiping. That's swiping left. Really? Yeah. You're going to the left, towards the left of the screen. So I'm moving my thumb from right to left. So yeah, would so that be that's left. swiping left? Yeah. Okay. So swipe left two times, and then it will tell you where you can go to the piss. And room. they call it go time, which I yeah. like a lot. That's it's probably better than run P. Yeah. Well, it's just like it says it, go time powered by run P. 
Does it say Powered by Rumpy? Yeah. Nice. Uh, I like that because, like, for the kids, I don't need that foul language on there. Also, what do you have to? What if you have to shit? Yeah. Drop a quick uh, deuce. Yes. Some poop so, talk. Uh, yeah. Run P is very. Um, what do you call that? Um, Problematic. No. Uh, non inclusive. Yes. Not inclusive to the shit crowd. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we also saw Mandy. You said, hey, this Nicolas Cage movie that everyone's excited about, Mandy, is on demand. And I was like, oh, yeah, I saw that people are excited about it. God tell you, I just I just don't want to see it. And sometimes you know that something's good and you just, you're just you like, okay, but I'm just not going to do that. And you saw it and I was like, okay, fine, I'll see it. And I saw it. I fucking I I did not like that movie. I think I mean I think that you went in with a negative. I uh, yes I you absolutely went in with did. a negative attitude, and it has to be an unbelievable movie for to, to be to, won over. To, yeah, right. Well, and, there were moments like it. It took what was it? I I kept track of it. Thirty eight minutes for something to happen in the movie, which the the beginning is like a little a little iffy. One because n- not a lot happens, and mm-hmm. the dialogue is not the strong point of the movie. Right, uh, and there's there's like some weird scenes that happen at the beginning. Um, which is again, it's it's not about the dialogue, but and it, and it's also another. One, it's one of those movies that like it's a weird fucking movie. Yeah. So you kind of just like have to to embrace it, and it yeah. takes a while at the beginning. It's uh, very much a product of oh, Stranger Things and Mad Max were hits recently. What if we just made a Stranger Things Mad Max movie? And that was. It, it made it a cool thing to watch. There were a lot of, especially the driving scenes, yeah. uh, there were a lot of cool shots, and like the colors were great. Yeah, and it was a very, very visually pleasing movie. Like, you know what? I would, uh, I would like to watch that movie on pot. <laughs> yes. Uh, somebody did reply to you saying, like, uh, like, how do people enjoy... You said, like, how do people enjoy this movie or something? Uh, I and, said, yo, this movie sucks, right? And, and some, someone responded, like, like try LSD. a little LSD yes. and you'll love it. Which, honestly, I've never done LSD before, but I imagine that LSD people... the One one of the few things I know about LSD is that uh, Josh Tillman said his, the best concert he ever went to was... His uh, own. Was, <laughs> yeah. Was when... Uh, yeah, you should have seen some of the lights. Um was when he did LSD and went to the 1989 tour. Okay. <clears throat> he said, or maybe yeah. it was the Red Tour. He said it was the best concert he'd ever been to. Fuck yeah. So I imagine for similar reasons, for those uh, LSD users out there, maybe that movie's a lot cooler. It was like, there were, I loved the shots of uh, Nicolas Cage with blood on his face. Uh, he was born Spent to do that. the last quarter of the movie with his face completely soaked in blood. And making Nicolas Cage faces. Yes. He was like, well, while I'm here, I, <laughs> it'd be a waste which, not to. Which is hilarious because he just recently came out and said that like the the Cage rage memes yeah. annoy him. Hmm. And like the, he thinks that it's very unfair to the directors of his movie uh, that like they've become so meme-y. Yeah. And, uh, meme-y. Meme-y. <laughs> and now... This latest Nicolas Cage movie is fucking Cage Rage porn. This, yeah, I do. Do you do that now when you watch things? You're like, you're like, oh, this. Is this was me. they intentionally put this in because you're you're not. Um, if you're making commercials, if you're making movies, if you're making whatever, like fuck the artistry part. You're not doing uh, yourself any favors if you're not keeping an eye out for like what here can be turned into a meme which right. sucks and it's so lame but it's definitely true like you do th- there's I mean a star is born was definitely done on purpose what you think so like that scene yeah they were like what what can we have that people will turn into a meme bam uh well i great transition here immediately after finishing mandy i i made a hybrid a star is born slash <laughs> yeah. mandy meme and it worked out perfectly that That's was like, pretty good. I bite myself on the back for that. A lot one. of blood on the face. Yes. Uh, well, it went from Nicolas Cage uh, just having blood in his face to Nicolas Cage making the Nicolas Cage face. Yes. So, um, yeah, it takes a little while to get started here, but I really, really enjoyed, uh, like, the, the fucked upness of this movie. Like, it is, it is a, one of those movies, I think the best way that I could describe it is it's a great movie to watch with other people because there are some absolutely ridiculous things that happen. Yeah, there could be like, laughs. Yes, there could be laughs. It's just like a very enjoyable popcorn, like, 
action movie. Yeah, I honestly I wish I saw it in theaters. Yes, hundred percent. Um, it they have uh, it's a really weird sort of movie that like creates its own world and doesn't answer oh, a yeah. lot of questions. And yeah. I like movies like that that are like, here is this place. We're not going to tell you where it is. It could be fucking anywhere yeah. in the world at any point in time. Uh, well, it's 1983. Do they say that? Yeah. Okay. So it's. It definitely creates its own little world, and it is a really sort of campy, sort of gross-out yeah. uh, action movie. It is. There's a shitload of blood. It definitely... Do you agree with the Stranger Things yeah, thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, it was... Uh, but, it, yeah, like, it was... It wasn't terrible. I, uh... It was fine. There were... The, the coolest scene was uh, Nicolas Cage making an axe. That was a good scene. Yeah. Uh, I would... I don't know. There, there are a couple scenes that I would point out that are fucking unbelievable. I thought that the uh, the inside the house scene was was great when the guy's watching porn. Oh yeah, uh, and then he ends up fighting that guy. Uh, I also really there's a Louis C.K. scene. What do you mean? Which is not good. Which one it's is that? about a, a cult. Oh, they abduct yes, this yeah, girl, yeah. and the cult leader. Uh, they're all sitting around. The cult leader goes up to the girl. Uh, drops his robe, maybe the worst penis I've ever seen in my life. Oh, it was the trashiest dick it in was the world. Terrible penis, which and begins. I don't understand it off with his whacker. I don't understand. Like maybe that was a prop penis. Maybe they made that dick intentionally bad. Yeah, but like if you're an actor and that's your reputation. Yeah, I know, man. Yeah, like if you've got a trash dick, God bless you if you're willing to put it out there. Yeah, you know what though. Yeah, like that that's the thing. I guess it's, it's one it, it's I guess one it's thing better it, to put it out there for art than to like put it out there like send an unsolicited trash dick pics. Yeah, maybe he got a body happens. double. Yeah. So, uh God bless him for using his trash dick for art. Because if someone's just making up if if someone's if there's like a rumor about that guy having a trash dick, he has plausible deniability. He's he can be like, "How do you know? You haven't seen it?" For all you know, it's just a pretty bad dick. And that guy could have been going through life uh, telling people, no, it's just pretty bad. Right. And But there's visual evidence that it it's trash. garbage. And he's not helping himself out either, by the way. Like, he could he could manscape a little right, bit. Right, I was going to say, maximize, make a little maximize uh, the best of illusion a, of, of a bad situation. Yeah, it was... Not good. The uh, the so the visuals the the visuals were Take docked down a full a letter grade there. If we were still doing our reviews, how did everybody look? We'd have to knock yeah. this one down a f- full point. Well, Cage looked great. I liked uh, Cage as uh, a bearded kind of sloppy guy in the one. I honestly wh- thought that he was great in this. Movie. Yeah, so do I. I. There wasn't enough of him to be honest. Because the first again, what's with this seventy minute thing? The similar to White Boy Rick, the first seventy minutes are just kind of like blah, and then at the seventy minute mark, it gets well, kicked into high gear. You do need to establish the fact that like him and his wife had a great relationship and that they were very close and they had this this bond because that gets ripped away from him. Spoiler alert! Right, they they kill the wife and it turns into this like revenge. It turns into a revenge movie in the second half. It's like peppermint, but good. But what was annoying was you knew that's what was going to happen. Right, like I mean, you it's knew in the synopsis. That's why I don't feel bad about like this guy. Spoiling it, he loses his wife and he gets revenge on these people. You couldn't have done I don't know half an hour on them slash them killing the wife, uh, half an hour on him going from sloppy dude to fucking warrior, and then an hour on just bloodshed. That's I thought, they should have done. I mean, like I when I was watching it, I agree with you that like. It does take a little while to get somewhere, but I don't necessarily have a problem with the way that it was done because I still felt sort of engrossed at the beginning because I was just trying to figure out what the fuck this yeah. movie was. Yeah. So I didn't have too much of a problem with it. TBH. It was the second best thing that I saw last night because uh, maybe that's a reason I didn't like it as much because I had gone from uh, watching the Browns win the Super yes. Bowl yeah. to <laughs> watching that. Um, what's your stamp grade? Bad. You don't bad. Yeah, I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go good again. I thought that that good 
Uh, it was a good, good movie. I recommended it to a couple of people after I saw it. I've recommended it to Kellen. Kellen's going to fucking love this movie because he's yeah? a weird guy. Okay. Who likes, uh, Bad he likes, things? <laughs> he likes sort of campy movies. Okay. Likes campy action flicks. So I recommended it to Kellen and I recommended it to my, one of my buddies. Nice. I will recommend it to you, the nice. brunch audience as well. I, I like don't. A lot, of our, a lot of our audience will not like this movie. Well, a lot of their audience are smart. Uh, can they do math, though? 